Hello, how are you doing? It is a grey old day here in London, but it's a new year and I have a big pile of really interesting sounding new books that I'm excited to talk about because there are a whole mixture of books here, um, some by authors I've read before, some uh, by authors that are new to me. Uh, most of these books have been published in January. Uh, some of them publishers kindly sent me and others I bought myself. So I'd be really interested to know if you've read any of these books uh, or if you're interested in reading any of these books now, uh, please let me know in the, the comments below. To start off, I have a real like book person's book, uh, which is The Last Days of Terra Nova by Manuel Rivas. And this is a novel which is all set around a bookshop. And it's the final day of uh, this bookshop. It's just about to, to close. It's um, sort of being forced to close. And the old man that owns it and runs it uh, decides to spend the night in this bookshop. And he's thinking back to when his father opened the this bookshop in the 1930s and um, how his family has changed over the years and how his country has changed over the years and through all of that time this bookshop has has been there so it sounds like such a lovely story. Next I have a big book, uh, Your Wish is My Command by Dina Mohammed. Uh, this is a graphic novel from Egypt. Um, it's set in a fictionalized version of the country where wishes can be purchased, uh, but there are different um, levels and classes of wishes, and uh, the the elite and the wealthy are the only ones that are able to, to buy the, the first class wishes. Um, so it follows three different individuals as they navigate trying to purchase wishes for um, them themselves. And you may notice that, um, so this is the, the front cover, and this is the, the back cover, and so uh, it is, you, you have to read it um, from right to left because this was originally published in Arabic and so in this English translation um, they've uh, mimicked that where you, you have to read the book um, from right to left, um, which I think is going to be a slightly disorientating experience for me at first, um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm really keen to get to this and I'm really keen to read more uh, graphic novels and graphic fiction. Um, so yeah, I'm so excited to, to read this. Vista Chinesa by Tatiana Salem Levy. This is uh, quite a short novel that is set in Brazil in 2014 when the World Cup is just about to happen and also the, the Olympics are going to occur there. So there's a real excitement and buzz uh, around the, the country and it follows a female architect who's involved in the um, construction of the Olympic Village there and she goes for a run one day um, out on in the hillside and she uh, she is raped and so it's following um, her personal tragedy amidst um, this this country that um, has this sort of buoyant atmosphere to it um, so it's sort of about the disconnect um, between those two things and I've read this author before um, she wrote a novel called um, the, the House in Smyrna which I really enjoyed and thought was really interesting so um, yeah I'm keen to read more of her work. Aurora by Serafina Madsen uh, this is a novel about a young woman that comes from an impoverished and evangelical background, uh, but she joins a surrealist coven and it's narrated from the point of view of a jinn um, that becomes obsessed with her. Uh, this novel is meant to be um, partly inspired by or kind of an ode to the novel The Master and the Margarita. And uh, so this uh, uh, author that I've also read before, um, I read her novel Dodge and Burn, which was this kind of a road trip novel that um, used this really interesting blend of styles and images and uh, I think she's such an interesting novelist and um, so yeah I'm keen to, to read this new book. Becky by Sarah May. This is a novel about a woman um, in the tabloids culture of 1990s London and um, she's an aspiring journalist and she wants to do anything 
to get to the top of her profession and ingratiate herself with um, the the powers that that be. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's a really interesting premise for a novel, you know, especially since I just uh, had read um, Prince Harry's memoir, and obviously um, his whole life has been really affected by tabloid journalism. So it'll be interesting to see how this novel approaches this subject matter. Next, I have an American memoir called A Girlhood, A Letter to My Transgender Daughter by Carolyn Hayes. So when this author's child, who they had been raising as a boy, um, declared that she was actually a girl, they supported her and referred to her as a girl, supported her in dressing as a girl. Um, but they got a knock on the door one day um, from the authorities who said that they had an anonymous tip-off um, about the way they were raising their child. Um, they decided that uh, this Republican state that they were living in wasn't a safe environment for their family anymore. So they, they moved state and they completely changed their lives. Um, so it's following that journey. And uh, also this, this author um, is a best-selling um, writer, um, but she's used a, a pseudonym for publishing this, this memoir um, because she's concerned about the, the safety of her family. So it's a very topical and timely book. Then I have a much older memoir, which I believe was first published in 1947, but it's just been republished by Pushkin Press in this um, beautiful new edition, uh, Parisian Days by Benin, um, who was uh, someone uh, that came from Eastern Europe, uh, but fled a uh, arranged um, loveless marriage and the um, political conflicts of her area to move to Paris and completely reinvent herself and become a writer. So it's following her her journey and I think sounds so good. I also have another older book which has uh, just been reprinted by Pushkin Press called A Shared Silence by Lala Romano. Uh, this was first published in the late 1950s in Italy, um, but this is the first time that it's appeared in English. And the story concerns two couples in occupied Italy during World War II and the connection they form with each other. Um, Italo Calvino was a fan of um, this author and book, um, calling it captivating with a heightened sensitivity that never falters. And also Jumpa Lahiri is, is a fan. And I just I love this like haunting cover. Next, I have a very big new novel um, from that mischievous author, Brett Easton Ellis. And by big, I mean uh, quite long, although it's been getting very favorable reviews as well. And um, Brett Easton Ellis's reviews lately um, haven't been all that good. And lately, I mean, in the past couple decades. So I did really enjoy uh, his novel, Lunar Park. And um, yeah, and, and so I'm, I'm really keen to read this new novel, which I think is kind of plays with uh, auto fiction in that it's about, um, or it poses, the narrator poses as Brett himself in his sort of coming of age years. And uh, so plays with his autobiographical experience but also fictionalizes that by um, inserting a serial killer in the midst of him and his group of friends in uh, California um, during that, that time. And I think it also might play upon his very first novel, um, Less Than Zero, or it's set in the time immediately before um, the publication of that novel, I think, uh, from, from what I've read about it. But, uh, but yeah, as I'm really curious to, to discover what it's all about. And I've never actually read Less than zero. So I think I want to read that first before then diving into this big new book. Sea Defenses by Hilary Taylor. This is about two women that form an unlikely friendship living in the same small town on the Norfolk coast. Uh, one of them is a trainee vicar uh, whose daughter goes missing and the other um, is a loner um, that lives in a house on the coastline that's um, literally crumbling into the sea and and uh, her son is kind of uh, a misfit. So it's about the bond that these two women form with each other. Well, by Chion Myon Kwon. This is a novel from South Korea that I believe was first published in the early 2000s there and was a big bestseller, but it's only just been translated into English. And it's about the lives of um, some interlinked characters that have special relationships with animals or 
creatures. Um, there's a woman that has been slightly obsessed with whales ever since she saw one um, cresting in the, the ocean. Um, and her daughter, who is mute but is able to communicate with elephants. And also a one-eyed woman that is able um, or has a special connection with honeybees. Um, so yeah, it sounds like quite a quirky story, but, uh, but yeah, really like engaging and fun one. The End of Nightwork by Aidan Cottrell Boyce. This is a debut novel and actually this author was named um, in a recent Guardian article as one of the 10 most exciting debut writers for 2023. And the, the story is about a man that suffers from quite a, a rare um, condition where he ages very rapidly overnight but at completely unpredictable times. Um, and he's also extremely interested in um, this 17th century prophet um, who spoke of ecological disaster. And when he starts reading some articles on Reddit about an impending ecological disaster, he thinks it's happening and he wants to move to this area, area where um, the, this, um, this prophet from the 17th century said would be the only safe place in Britain to, to be. So yeah, really interesting sounding story. And I think this is such a, a striking cover. Um, so yeah, I'm really keen to read this. And finally, I've been sent a proof of a really interesting sounding new historical novel uh, called River, Sing Me Home by Eleanor Shearer. Um, this is set in 1834 in Barbados and follows a woman who was a slave. But in that year, slavery um, was declared illegal. So um, she goes in pursuit and tries to track down her children um, that she gave birth to and who had survived. Uh, but who were sold um, to different plantations. Um, so she doesn't know where they are and it's, it's quite a, a mission to, to track them down. So it sounds like a really heartrending uh, but very moving story. Um, so these are all of the new books um, yeah, that I, I talked about and that I, I want to, to get to. But like I said, um, let me know if you have read any of these books or if you're interested in reading any of them now or do you have any new books that you're really looking forward to this month and this new year. Um, so I hope you're doing well and reading good things and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.